Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today is the first Sunday of the month and the first Sunday of the year, actually, which means it's time for Chef Dell's Kitchen, and he makes delicious food. Ha, ha, ha. And today he's going to be demonstrating some winter comfort foods. Hello, Dell. How are you? I'm Hey, how are you? I'm good. Your setup looks beautiful. It looks like there's some nutritional yeast there, some black yeah. beans, maybe a yeah. little bit of green stuff. So some jackfruit. Have you ever seen jackfruit yet? I love jackfruit. Now that looks like maybe that's canned jackfruit. That's canned organic jackfruit in brine. Nice. I've not tried the fresh. I see horror stories on YouTube about prepping fresh jackfruit. Have you done that? I haven't prepped it, but I've tasted it. And it's it's actually, there's like a glue in it. Like you could, it's like super glue, you know? Yeah, it's it's very sticky, very messy to prep it. Yep. And then it comes in, so you can get huge, huge piece of fruit is what it is. So it's kind of it's, crazy. It's, it's gigantic. So winter comfort foods, what are you going to be making today? Well, I tell you what, I think that if you ask any one person what comfort food is for them, it's going to be different. Uh, for people, it's mac and cheese, blah, 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 and all that. I, you know, I've always had very eclectic taste, so I like a lot of different foods. But I've got three dishes that I haven't made for a while that I, I miss. And I thought, I don't know those. Because it's nice and cold here in Ohio, and they're perfect. We're making my um, Southwestern stuffed potatoes, or twice baked potatoes. And they're delicious. And what I love about them is that um, this the filling that we're making, you could either stuff into the potatoes, or you could toss it with pasta. pasta. So either or up to you. And then we're making a dish called tetrazzini. And it sounds like an Italian dish. Not. It was actually created for a, a famous San Francisco opera star. And the hint that they give online that it's not an Italian dish with turkey. It's usually turkey tetrazzini. We're doing it with our new friend, Jackfruit. Oops. <laughs> so so it's, it's delicious. Um, it's got white wine in it. Take that out and put another dry fruit juice in it if you wanted that or some vinegar or whatever to come up with similar flavors. And then we're making um, stuffed peppers, a kind of a classic take on stuffed peppers. My, my Aunt Linda used to make stuffed peppers, and her peppers were cooked until they were almost mush, <laughs> and they were stuffed. They were in the bottom of the pan, and then she made kind of a hamburger topping that also included grape jelly and so that that was and they were sweet delicious but um where we need a healthier version so uh, i know you're a fan as i am of millet and we're going to a variation on my millet loaf as the filling for this and it's going to be delicious so well, your one, millet loaf is one of the best loaves i've ever tried i watched you make it the other day um i know it took long than it's supposed to but uh, I, that depends on who's for some reason, but it this is a variation on it. I change the seasonings around, but it's just, it's just what I do, right? It's to change things up and see what else happens. But let me get started on the uh, peppers because this all has to go. Everything today is it goes into the so you know we make sure that we get it you to see the final picture of it all um, before we leave you. But we always, in my world, in a dry pan, we're not cooking with oil. And so, you know, as you know, oil is one of those foods that we don't need in our diet. It doesn't do anything to help us healthfully. Uh, all it did for me was help me to get to over 500 pounds in weight at one point in my life. So leave out the oil. You're going to be a lot happier. But look, you put your vegetables in the pan, and these are high water content vegetables, onions and peppers. Um, they don't stick because they have a lot of water in them, and they're going to be fine just as they are. My mom never made stuffed peppers. She, um, she, I think she, meatloaf was her thing, and my dad too. Uh, my parents made very different versions of meatloaf. Uh, mom chopped up the vegetables really fine. Dad was kind of a lazy cook and had these big, chunky vegetables. My brother's in the other room, so he remembers. And then with love, you know, I always had to 
to worry about whether it was cooked or not because he and I learned to cook at the same time. I mean, I was with him right when when he first started cooking after my parents got divorced. And so we uh, spent a lot of time learning from our mistakes, but he eventually became a very good cook. Uh, some classic recipes that he loved to do and we loved to eat. So I miss some of those foods. Nice. So you're just, you just put it, put the uh, peppers and the onions in the pan, no water, right? No, yeah. A lot of people, when they do it, when they do an oil free saute, they start with water, but here's the thing. I, I want the browning uh, that happens. That caramelization is flavor. So let that happen and then add water and don't add a tablespoon or two, maybe if you need it. Now, if, in a pan like this, where there's not a lot of vegetables in there, we probably will add add some water if I can find it. But in um, in um, a pan that was filled with um, vegetables, you wouldn't need to because there'd be plenty of steam coming off of those vegetables to do the job for us. But you can see there, if you look closely, that little bit of browning that starts to ha happen in the bottom of the pan. But as long as you aren't sticking to the pan, you're okay. And you'll notice if you look through my recipes, they all start off with reheat your skillet, add your onions and peppers or onions and celery and, and, and uh, carrots, and saute eight minutes until. Uh, the onions start to brown. Add water one or two tablespoons at a time as needed. Keep the vegetables from sticking, but that's as needed. Keeping the more brown. I'm doing you're, exactly. just, you're just using a regular old stainless steel pan, right? This is a stainless steel pan. I I don't buy non-stick because I tend to beat them up so badly, and you hear horror stories about them. But I, I have one, but it's, I, don't, I don't use it very much. Um, for what we're doing here, and I, and, and by the way, AJ, I've done flatbreads. I have an iron skillet, and I don't, I don't oil my cast iron skillet, but I've done flatbreads on those too. It's just all about how you approach it. Do you ever use nonstick, or have you ever used nonstick? Uh huh. Yeah. I mean, I for most of the red food that I cook. I don't need it. Um, if I make pancakes, I'll use the nonstick. Um, just give me that. And then the trick, so the one skill that I have, I think the trick to getting nonstick to work was the higher heat. And the actual truth is that this one comes with instructions. This is the one that I have uh, called Blue Diamond. Um, and you can see there's no nicks out of this one yet. And I've had it for probably six months. But this one, you actually cook it on a lower heat. It uh, gives you the best nonstick functioning. So who knew? You'll notice that I've not added anything like spices or anything like that yet. But I add my only as my onions are close to being done. Because garlic can very easily. And we can't have that. And then the herbs and spices you can add in with your garlic. I think we have our oregano and sage and basil and cumin that we've added there. And then just toast those for a minute. Toasting your spices also brings out their flavor. And you also don't fail to make that happen. While this thing, I've got millet cooking in the background, doing its thing. Do you just cook mere millet on the stove? Have you ever used either a rice cooker or a pressure cooker? Um, no. Uh oh. Um, rice cooker, or pressure cooker. I've never used a pressure cooker. I have um. What are they called? You have them and love them. Uh, instant pot. I have an instant pot and I delete a little bit of instant pot, but not a lot. Um, but you know, and I'll tell you why, it's mostly just me here most of the time, right? And so I don't cook large quantities of anything. 
and I get in the kitchen and I kind of like my kitchen time. Usually when I'm in the kitchen, I'm in there, um, getting something to go, testing a recipe or whatever. So I don't mind taking my time and we're just letting the rice and whatever do its job. I air fryers and two instant pots because I've done them for classes. All right, so we got our herbs toasted for a minute. We're going to put half our tomato here. That's half a cup out of one cup total. And then I can turn that off and add in the rest of our ingredients. Tahini is just a way to give it kind of a tangy flavor. You could use ground roasted sesame seeds. You could leave it out. I've got nutritional yeast, which also gives it that umami, which is that savory flavor that we all love. This happened, AJ? And, and you know, I kind of use, I cheated, I use batch cooking techniques. In other words, I prepped a lot of the vegetables ahead of time so that I'd have them ready to go. And that's not a bad way to cook. Do your mise en place and such ahead of time and up spending much less time the day of cooking to make anything happen, right? It's how professional kitchens. And I think it's good for me to say so now. The next course that I'm developing at the T. Colin Campbell Center for Nutrition Studies is a course on meal planning strategies that includes batch cooking pepper. I like it a little more than most people do, but strategies for batch cooking. Let me taste the salt of the millet. So let's talk for a minute. The one thing that you want to do if you're making meatloaf or making meatballs out of this is you want to overcook more than undercook it because it holds together better if you overcook it a little bit. A little bit mushy. I can turn this into a loaf right now and have meatloaf that's sliceable just sandwiches. When you made my my millet love, AJ, did you uh, did you make sliced sandwiches afterwards? I didn't uh, because you know what I love having loaf with mashed potato and gravy. That's like my thing. Oh, there you go. But, yeah, and because yeah. when you say comfort food, what I think in my head is mashed potatoes and gravy. Yeah, I can I be tell a big secret? I'm kind of neither here nor there about mashed potatoes. I love gravy. I think I think the real purpose of mashed potatoes in this world is to get gravy someplace to go. <laughs> that's I'm my honest. Gravy. I'm a gravy lover. That's my honest feeling about it. So I'm going to taste this one more time. Make sure everything gets mixed up in here. But see how quick together. And it's delicious. And then we're just going ahead of time. I bought to boil a um, large pot of water, and I parboiled my green peppers so that they're part cooked. And then um, rinsed them under cold water. So what, that does they parboil, hold... what does parboil mean exactly? Well, you're you're not cooking them until they're completely done. It's and it's not a boil. Parboil means just that you know you're 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 partially you're partially cooking them. In boiling water. That's basically what that means. Well, what? How does that compare to blanching? Blanching is probably just a time component. Blanching is a little shorter period of time than parboiling. Parboiling. So blanching you'll do with very delicate vegetables and parboiling peppers and things like that that can be sturdy cooking. Does that help? Yep. Thank you. So we're just going to fill each one of these. I 
is here visiting from Indiana, and I get to this delicious food tonight. Yummy. Do you cook every day, Stel? Is that like do you cook every single day? Um, I'm getting better at cooking every day. It's part of my my commitment to my own health is to stop ordering because you know Columbus has 14 vegan, but it's hard to find. I can find a few healthy dishes, but not not like as healthy as what I cook at home. So I cook more at home, and what I tend to do is I make a big pot of soup. And then eat on that for a few days. I'll make meatloaf and eat on that, or millet loaf and eat on that for a few days. And I, I cook like that. And when by I the visited, way, when I visited you a while back, we went to a restaurant that had a really good beef burger. We went to the um, yeah, North Star. Oh my God, right? North yeah. Star. Yeah. That was um, a good way, burger. Before I let it go, extra filling here. So get out more peppers or. Bake this into a mini loaf if you want to. Up to you. And then the rest of our sauce is over the Yes, indeed. And that is that. And water in the pan, just so it doesn't stick. Into the oven, she got. Those are pretty. Are they pretty? Beautiful. Oh, they're not in front of the. Yeah, they're very pretty. It's a nice dish. And I'm sorry, Aunt Linda, but. Mine are prettier than yours because I parboiled my peppers. All right. My Aunt Linda, we, we used to talk smack. She was one of those people. So let's move on to our twice. So I did a thing. I, I pre-baked my potatoes because you know, nobody wants to watch that. And I got I found the large ones. Sometimes these larger potatoes are harder to find, but if you do, good shape. Um, bake, all you do is scrub them, put them in the pan, throw them in the oven, and leave them in there for about an hour. Come back and poke them with a fork, test them for doneness. If they're done, let them cool. And let them cool, slice them because it helps keep moist. And then slice them in half and scoop out the flesh. And you can see, I have a snack for tomorrow, uh, all the scooped out flesh. I will add some salt and pepper too, or maybe I'll make gravy, I don't know. And that'll be those part of my lunch tomorrow. Those look like really big potatoes. Where did you These get These are them? big ones. They're definitely eight ounce potatoes. Um, I've been finding them about two thirds that size. So, you know, buy more and just, right? But yeah, and then I have one here I didn't scoop out. I'll show you. All you're going to do is go around the edge with your spoon, right? Like that. And that is that. All right, we'll set that aside. And then we I gave you a recipe for the cheese sauce that goes with this. But I'm not going to, uh, I've made it a thousand times. You just boil your onions and peppers and cashews and potatoes, and then you puree that with some nutritional yeast and lemon juice. And uh, I think the recipe that I gave you is with half potatoes and half cauliflower, which I've also made cheese sauce out of, and it's delicious. So you can go either way. For our twice baked potatoes, we try onions and peppers. It must be the winter vegetable. And doing the same thing we just did, and it's going to take about the same amount of time. Really, the uh, the pre prep stuff. The, the, I cooked my pasta ahead of time for the tetrazzini, measured everything out. All that stuff means that this can all happen. So I'm going to cook how many servings? Six, twelve, maybe eighteen servings of food in about an hour's work, right? So 
I love that. Um, and, and, then, and then with doing it that way, you only clean up your kitchen once, right? I've got 18 servings of food. I can throw extras in the freezer, give some to my neighbor, whatever you want to do. And then you take your extra, freeze it, and whatever you want to do. And you greatly cut by the amount of time you spend in the kitchen. So you first you did red and uh, red bell pepper, and now you first you and, did green. Now you're doing red. Yeah, and you can use orange or yellow or whatever. Red is my favorite. And all that vitamin C in there, right? Yeah, the I don't care for the green as well. They sometimes give me a little tummy ache. Oh, great. Okay. Um, the red, uh, I like the sweeter red bell pepper usually if it's snacking. Um, green pepper I just use if it's cooked in something or in a stir fry or something. Yeah. But you know what I say about recipes? This is not a, a book of law here. Hey, Once everyone, you... and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ. Hello. We're doing great. Give me a second. My sound is getting weird. We'll keep talking. Does your computer ever do that where it just starts playing stuff? <laughs> you have a ghost in the machine. Yeah, the ghost in the machine. Remember that movie? I didn't see it because it looked too scary. Yeah, I like my scary movies. Uh -oh. I just bought a new laptop, which I'm not using tonight, but I did go this machine and do some clean, a lot of cleanup stuff on it so that it runs more smoothly. Um, I am, and I'm going to continue streaming with it because um, that's just the deal. So I'm going to add another thing of RAM in here, and I'll be good to go, hopefully. Because when I'm not filming, doing a live streaming like I am with you, I'm recording, and I record onto the computer, and there's only like so many frames per second you can do, and it, it starts to slow it down and all that, and I'm like, uh. So you do what you got to to make it all happen. Do you, do you film yourself? I do. Wow. How do you know that you're getting yourself on the screen? Well, so the exact same method of this studio called OBS Studio, I, I plug into OBS Studio. And so on the left-hand side of the table, I'll do all my cooking, but it's all tethered into the computer. And I can see on the screen um, both shots, my overhead shot and... Um, and my side view stop. So we're not recording. Most of these are what they call hands videos. So you're recording the video, not me necessarily. Although I do a couple of uh, talking videos. I'm going to add my jalapeno here. And then I'm going to add my garlic. And my ancho chili powder and cumin. I've always found it's a, not that it's hard technology wise necessarily to record yourself, but if I don't have at least one person I'm talking to, you know what I mean? Oh, well, for the cooking, we're doing um, voiceovers on some of the cooking um, videos if if we do any talking at all. Got it. That is, that's not so hard. You don't have to engage with the audience then. Yeah, there's no, no, there's no direct engagement. I have an introductory video. And I'll record that live and I'll speak into the camera, blah, blah, blah. Adding my much two cups of black beans and my corn. And let those cook for a few minutes just because I've got a lot of but you let some of that liquid cook off and you intensify the flavors there. Season that with salt and pepper if you use it. 
That's pretty. It looks very Southwestern. I know. I love cooking for color. You know it. It really, I think, it, it changes your craving for healthy food. It helps me. I look at that and go, I want to eat that. I, like I would eat that just like it is. You could serve that over brown rice even and have a a nice dish, couldn't you? Yeah, or even on a salad. It, it, yeah, there, there is a version of this where it's not cooked, but where I add balsamic vinegar and um, make it into a salsa. And, and I did that for years ago at a restaurant that I worked at. The pasta salad and the rice salad and the salad salad and off you go. And I'll let you see pre-prepped cheese sauce. Our chopped cilantro, of course. What do, you say, in. what do you say to the cilantro haters in the world? Leave it out and don't call me. <laughs> you know, there are people who just have that gene for not being able to tolerate it. It tastes like soap. And you can leave it out. Use parsley. Use basil. This will usually taste just as delicious with basil on it. Just added in my one and a half cups of cheese. What about parsley? Is a substance. Parsley, yeah, parsley's not a lot of flavor for me. It's a good, healthy herb, isn't it? it certainly does deserve a plate at the table because of how healthy it is. But it's no cilantro. No. And I'm a cilantro, cilantro so I'm, 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 you know, find your own substitute. Oh, it's perfection, AJ. Yeah. It really is. I'm going to pull that off the stove and start on my next dish. And while that's cooking, that poor, poor old beat up pan, isn't it? We're going to add our mushrooms, our jackfruit. This is our pepperzini now. Onions. And then we only need part of these mushrooms. The other part of the snack. And let those do their thing. And while I can stuff my potatoes. I love when potatoes are that big. You love them what? Love when they're that big, then you don't have to eat as many. Because sometimes they're uh, so big, you know? Yeah. I think this filling is really meant for more for like, when they're this size, you may only get four. I can set of six. You all let me know how much you come up with on your own. But we'll fill it up just a little bit less. This kind of comfort food, I hear a lot of people say, and I had someone review one of my cooks well, these are dishes that I, I wouldn't cook for myself. I would go out to eat, but I'm never going to cook like this for myself. And part of what I think I've been, conversations I'm having with myself, why shouldn't I cook like this for me and really enjoy a special meal that I prepared that's often here and less expensive than what I'm going to get in the restaurant? Why shouldn't I celebrate cooking at home and enjoying this and the time that I spend in it doing so is not a bad deal. And if I have leftover potatoes 
I'll show you what I'm going to do with them. I have an idea because I have plenty of, I have some of that left from the peppers, right? So why not stuff those into a potato? And then, uh, Mouth wateringly delicious. Right? Don't you wish you were here? I wish I was there. I'm gonna come see you one day. Oh, that'd be fun. Oh my gosh, right? I have a picture I keep meaning to post. First time I met you, you were sitting on my lap. <laughs> ah, what a memory you have. <laughs> so I have one extra. There. And I'll pull that off and set it aside and go ahead and stick these in the oven. That looks pretty. They look gorgeous. Oh, there's your jackfruit. Doing its thing. Sometimes I it's taking me loves of sticking. It's taking me a while to step up to jackfruit. And so sometimes I do different things to it to uh get it to a place where I'm good with it. Like I'll mash it lightly. Another thing I like to do to it is a little bit of um so tamari and then throw it in the oven and let it sort of dry it. It gives it a much more meaty texture. So if you've tried jackfruit and don't think it, you might try that. Well, what's interesting is until I heard of jackfruit, I never heard of it. It's like my whole life, I never really heard of it until recently. You and me both. I'm sure that I saw it in the store and just passed it by. Yeah, because it looks so freaky. <laughs> yeah. It's an odd, all those, and I'm kind of a traditional. There's a lot of ingredients I probably have not tried. Probably not. Have you ever had durian? No, that stinky fruit? No. Yeah, I, I mean, I think I tried it in culinary school, and I whether I liked it or not, I don't even remember because it was so bad smelling, I just couldn't bring myself to eat it. I, I have a very sensitive nose, AJ, and if, if it stinks, I ain't doing it. No, 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 no. Well, then why do people eat blue cheese, you think? Now, I used to, say, I used to love blue cheese. So why is it that I like that, but not the durian? Yeah, because blue cheese is kind of stinky. It's all familiarity, I think. Do you have a good blue cheese dressing? People are always asking for a vegan, oil-free blue cheese. Ah, I've done that yet. I have not yet gotten into the world of making homemade vegan cheeses. Um, I'm not so sure if I will or not. And I'll tell you why. My problem is that I eat too much calorically dense foods. I'm trying to get away from that. And your 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 pieces, vegan as they are, even with their without the oil, are going to be uh, dense. That's what I like about this cheese sauce recipe. I just got tahini in about. The original version of this recipe had one cup of oil, a half a cup of tahini, a cup of cashews in it. I'm like, I can't eat that. You know? Just give me a Snickers bar instead. What the heck? I want to know who are the people that can eat those foods. Well, can, can, all right. You brought it up because I've been listening to people, you know, you know, I've known me long enough to know that I've lost a lot of weight over time and put a lot of weight back on. And and so my focus has become more about lose the weight. I did it two years ago. I lost 100 pounds, but I put it back on uh, when I got sick. So my focus has been how do you get the weight off and then leave it off, right? Yeah. Well, we know the right kind of diet. Roberta Russell did a report on it. We know that the whole food plant-based diet is the right diet to do it. But what keeps people like me who love the occasional pizza or the you know, vegan ice cream from going off the deep end when we eat those things. And it's learning about how to train yourself to think differently and look differently at those foods. 
I, I have to learn how to have a bite of ice cream and then put it away. If I can't do that, I can never have it. And I don't know that I can live in that world. That's really interesting conversation because I completely hear what you're saying. And I hear this from a lot of people. So you're talking about the whole conversation of abstinence versus moderation. And uh -huh. not everyone can do it. For, for the people that can do it, it seems to work beautifully, but not everyone can. So everybody has to know themselves. And I just had this conversation with Dr. Lyle yesterday. I don't know if you've ever spoken to him personally, but what he talks about is that this idea of the ego trap that when it's too strict, it's too hard, people will kick over the table. But for some people, if they're real sensitive to the pleasure trap, the diet that gets them out of the pleasure trap um, gets them out of the ego trap can put them in the pleasure trap. So I don't have an answer for you other than for me, abstinence works, but I'm able to just find other things that are lower calorically dense that I love so much, but that that's just me. And it doesn't work for everybody, you know? Well, that, that's part of what my approach is, is to, so when I want ice cream, I no Nana ice cream. I like it made sweetened with dates. I have no problem eating it. So I need to make those kinds of foods as accessible. Yeah. As I, as I can Absolutely. Have. Yep. So that's kind of my goal for the, the new year is to really change the way that I think about what I have available. And then I know that eating, eating two cookies can send me off into a week long binge of eating. I know that. So what's the longest stretch of abstinence you've had? um seven months that's amazing but how did you how did you feel during that time did you feel good oh yeah yeah so this is the thing you got to kind of remember that you know when it, you we all know it takes a while to take weight off but when you put it back on does it come back up quicker you think yeah i do think it comes back quicker that's that's not good i mean that, i mean it's just they so come back easily. so is whatever it? you do so my, part of my point is is even if I can't get to that point where I can have a half a cup of, of vegan ice cream and then set it aside, I can't have it. And I'm at that age, too, where I have the immediate consequences of long binge, and I'm not comfortable, mm -hmm. right? And I'm tired of not being comfortable. So what's that decision? I hear you, Frank. All right, so once our wine cooks down, I'm going to go ahead and add my cooked pasta. This is uh, the Tinkinata brand. I don't think I need all quite all of that. It's supposed to be five cups. Tinkinata is a brown rice gluten free pasta. Um, it's a whole grain. Um, adding the mushroom mixture. And then we're going to add our cheese sauce. We have some vegetable broth. I think I might need more cheese sauce. We'll look in here and see. What do you do about the people that, for whatever reason, allergies, tummy issues, can't have nutritional yeast? How do you make it taste good without it? Well, I mean, I grew up without nutritional yeast. I don't. I think it's it certainly is possible. And don't forget that you're. Your taste buds down regulate to whatever it is you're eating. Yeah. Um, so nutritional yeast is a new mommy type flavor. Also well, soy sauce or mushrooms, um, mushroom powder, porcini mushrooms make a great alternative. Um, um, Parmesan cheese with toasted ground sesame seeds and um, toasted ground cashews. But I think instead of nutritional yeast, you could certainly add in a little bit of. Um, of uh, powdered porcini mushrooms, which have an amazing umami flavor and would probably go a long way for giving you some, some of that flavor. But you, I mean, you know, instead of like what it is you can't have, right? I mean, like you say, find, find things that you like. Or that you just love, you know? Or that you just love. And, and, and even, you know, well, of course, I have to be careful there because I just love peanut butter. Um, <laughs> Have you yeah. tried PB2? I've never had it, but some people think it's really great. I have I have tried it. Matter of fact, I've made a, one of my favorite no bake cookies um, is a, a chocolate peanut butter oatmeal no bake. 
and I have made it with dates, unsweetened chocolate, and PB2, and it's delicious. Nice. One of my favorite peanut sauces with PB2, and it too is delicious. So this goes into a baking dish. Ouch, ouch, ouch. I just heard a funny quote. Mediocrity is the key to never falling short of your expectations. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, so there's that. And then we've got some breadcrumbs that we've taught Italian seasonings. And we're just going to sprinkle that across the top and let those toast in the oven. At this point, the dish is and you can eat it just like it is, but toast those breadcrumbs so that you get that extra toasty flavor. All right. And then that goes into the oven, and I bet green pepper is ready to come. Clean up for you. Just a little bit. AJ, I yep. wish you the best new year. I love you. Oh, thank you, hon. I love the work that you and I love your and um it really does mean a lot. Mm -hmm. That's a, you're a real chef. You clean up your workstation. I remember when we had you at Healthy Tastes of LA, you even swept. <laughs> Can't help it. You can't help. Well, who wants to show your final shot here? It should be a show shot. It shouldn't be a... There are my stuffed peppers. Are those looking gorgeous? They, are. Mm -hmm. they look like the real thing. They look like, they taste like the real thing, too. And then the our price baked potatoes. And you could certainly some uh, chopped avocado or some chopped cilantro. We'll, we'll sprinkle large with green onions just to make them pop there. So my dad, my dad just passed away today, what? and he was the master of comfort food, and that's what he grew up with and what he loves. This is yeah. kind of a little celebration for him. My God, you could have totally missed. Oh my God, Del, I'm so sorry. Oh no, don't worry about it. It just happened, it just happened. and um, I had class all set up and ready to go, so there's nothing else for me to do. All right, so that's that and that. And oh, I was going to show you. Well, Take your, you have extra of these uh, potatoes, certainly do. Stuff out. And you could either do cheese sauce on top of those. Well, you could, you know, these start to cool down, they start to set up, and they start to shape. You could do cheese sauce, you could top that with tomato sauce, um, whatever you wanted to do, and then bake those. So that's a bonus thing. And then that just gives us a few minutes here, if you want to hang out until... Yeah, well, until the, until what, what we are waiting for. <laughs> Tetrazzini. Tetrazzini. I remember Did drinking you... Tetrazzini. That that's what uh, I remember in, in at the dorms. They had something called Turkey Tetrazzini. This is based. Did you um? Did you eat a lot of pasta? 
I don't eat any pasta and it, it just doesn't feel good in my tummy. So I'll do zucchini noodles, butternut squash noodles, kelp noodles, hard palm noodles. But I don't know why pasta just is one of those things. I have a very delicate GI system and it's just, I don't know, it doesn't ever feel good. But I still do all the sauces you would do, you know, on other things. Right. I am um, as much pasta as um, but I like it. We had some last night. I made um, spaghetti and millet balls. Yeah, your millet balls are great. I think one of the things about pasta is you got to boil water. You got to wait for the water to boil. Where other things I make, I can just reheat in the microwave or or just cook them. And pasta just seems daunting to me. Yeah, I understand. I mean, I'm a chef and I'm saying that, but it's just, I went to raw culinary school. There was no pasta made almost. <laughs> but but so, yeah, it doesn't. This is bubbling on the edge, and so it's ready to go. Nice. My, I have my stove on top, but, but that's our lovely little uh, winter casseroles, comfort foods, huh? Wow, those look beautiful, Del. Yum. Which one should I have for dinner? Um, mm, the probably oh gosh, I mean all of it, but maybe I don't know. I I would always gravitate towards the potato, but those bell peppers look mighty fine too. I hear you. I'm going to change my view and say hi to you for a minute. Nice. Or maybe not. You know what I can do is I can just stop your share. There you go. And there I am. I'm wearing, well, Dell, I'm so sorry about your dad. That's on my condolences to your family. Well, thank you. He's a good man. 96, by the way. 96? 97. It's a good, good run. He had a good run. He had a good life. Yeah. Well, and we wish the same for all of you. Well, thanks so much. You're coming back, I think, before the Super Bowl next month. Oh, so you do some Super Bowl appetizers. Yeah, like wings and things. Wings and things. I'll do my cauliflower wings. They're delicious. Oh, that's so, They're delicious. That should be your next book. Delicious. Oh, cooking. boy. Yeah. Well, okay. I, have a, I have a co-author and she's already said no to that. Okay. Well, I, I I still like it. When you worked at the wellness forum, I always joked it should have been the Delness forum. I don't disagree. <laughs> You're adorable. Thanks so much, Del. This was a great presentation. Thank you. Have a good night. Absolutely. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific time for plant-based classics with Lauren Burnick, and she's going to be making chili and cornbread. Take care, everyone.